Ray is now in real danger after The Force Awakens. What can you tell us about this new adventure? You're the first person to say that. I would say, yeah, yeah. I'd say the there is more of a sense uh, this time round in terms of Kylo Ren and the dark side of the Force. There wasn't an understanding of her, of anyone, before The Force Awakens. And now, obviously, after the fight with Kylo, there is probably a sense from the dark side that they know one of the problems in the way of getting to Luke or whatever it is they want to do, take over the galaxy. Um, but what's amazing is on the little island with Mark, it's a safe environment and there is a lot of space and time for Ray to ask questions that she's had for a long time and get a greater sense of understanding of why she's there and what this thing is that she feels. And um, in the meantime, trying to get Luke to come and save the galaxy. And I need help. When Luke was training, he was training with Yoda. Um, Ray is not training with Luke. Ray has gone to ask about something that she isn't really involved in. She wants Luke to come back and help the Resistance, because that's what the Resistance wants. Um, so it isn't, I wouldn't say that the island is training. I would say that the island is um, exploration and her understanding more what the force is, what this story is, what the bigger picture is. And it isn't so much about her. She just has questions within that about her. Um, and yeah, and I don't think Luke so much serves as a teacher in the same sense that Yoda did. Because as we see from the advert, Luke has some different ideas about the Force now. Um, but they both, I think there's an exploration of both Rey and Luke. They're, they're asking questions of each other and of themselves. And it's wonderful that they both get to sort of answer those questions. Let the past die. Because of the dark times, it's just wonderful in general to be part of something that really brings people together and makes people happy. Um, uh, I don't think, it's weird because I'm not Ray, like I play Ray, but the, the impact she's had on people is not what I've had on people. And I think that's what sometimes odd, because I'm like, I'm not her, she's really great. Um, but I think in terms of character, she is constantly trying to do the right thing. And she, all she wants is to have a family. Like she just wants to be part of a family. And she found that with BB-8 and she found that with Finn and she's found it with the Resistance. And she'll continue to try and find that family. Um, and I think she's pretty selfless. And so in those terms, I'm very happy that people responded to her well. Wow, that's serious. Yeah. And do you realize the, the word that you belong to nowadays? Um, that, is, that is loud, huh? Um, I do somewhat, but because I didn't really grow up with it, there are still things that I find very surprising. Like, it still surprises me. Um, but yes, I do have more of an understanding <laughs> of this. And you don't have to tell anything, but which is going to be your side? This one or oh, this one? Oh, wow! Um, I mean, I guess... You can hold it if you want. I guess we wait... Uh, that... If you would like me to hold it, sure. Sure. Um, I don't know which is which, or even how to. You turn have it to, on. to press that. that. Yeah. Yeah. And then how's the red go on? And, and one more time, and one more time. I see. Um, I mean, I think we'll have to wait and see. Um, what do you think? Um, how is that your character gonna keep the balance between the force, but also the dark side? I would say trust in Ray's soul that she uh, is on the light side. Um, and even if there are questions that she has that maybe would explore a dark theme or whatever it is, um, ultimately I feel like she will end up doing the right thing. What is the importance that the past gotta have uh, in Ray's character? Ray has a deep yearning to understand where it is she came from and, and how that influences her. But my thing has always been, and I think maybe it's because I didn't, I wasn't a huge Star Wars fan. I, I'm surprised by everyone's desire to know where she comes from, because ultimately for me, these films are talking about the future. 
and they're talking about where people go and obviously there's questions as to why people do the things they do but it's all progress it's all progress and so there are a lot of questions about where Ray comes from but ultimately and um, could you ex uh, share us some experience uh, about working with uh, Mark Hamill but also with uh, Carrie Fisher um, working with Harrison and Carrie and Mark sort of in that order because that's how it worked was um, amazing and I'm very lucky that I've got to work with all three um, Carrie is wonderful and she's wonderful in the film and Mark was wonderful and he's wonderful in the film um, uh, I don't really know there were just a lot of stories Mark is very embracing of uh, everyone and he's he's just a really kind man and he's wonderful to work with so yeah it was just good and what is the thing that you gonna miss the most of, of Carrie Fisher, by Molly? Oh, I don't know. Just her. Just her. So. It's fun. The last job I just did, there was a huge Star Wars fan, and I didn't realize, and he really kept it together for like six weeks. And then there was a day, I think the day after the trailer came out, he came up to me, he was like, is it time? I was like, you ask me anything. So I'm not kidding, for 20 minutes, he pitched me this thing, which sounded insane. Like, Snoke wasn't real and then Ray had died. Ray was Snoke, but they had come back from the dead. It was crazy. But I was like, do you know what? If you believe that, that's awesome. But usually I don't read things, but usually people tell me things. And it's great because everyone has an opinion. Lizzie, thanks for your time. Thank you. Congratulations for the movie, for your character. Thank you. In the first one was amazing. Um, the first question is, it was more easy for you to play the same character in the second movie? No. 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 Because the first time around I was like, ah, this is fun. Like it was scary, it was very nerve wracking. But once you were in there, it was like in there, in there, in there. And there wasn't much time to, to stop and think. And then after that I had a year to think about what had gone on. And then the film came out and people were so nice, but I didn't really get it. And so going into the second one was, um, really scary, but luckily was surrounded by great people who made it not so scary. But it was, I felt far more neurotic second time around. Mm -hmm. I know it's a difficult question, but what happened with, with Ray in this movie? <laughs> it's, it's difficult, but... But also you know you can't get so an course. answer. Um, she uh, is able to ask Luke some questions, she's able to explore what it is that she this force feeling that she has, she is able to ask where she comes from. She may not get all the answers, but there is time for her to ask the questions. Um, so there is some personal growth, which is great. Mm -hmm. Other difficult question. What can you say about the, the relationship of Luke and Ray? Um, the relationship between Luke and Ray is at the beginning, not quite what she expects. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Luke wanted anyone to turn up on the island. Um, but there's a, a lot of growth um, at least for Ray, and there's much more understanding, which is great. He is just what she needs at that time. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's a really nice progress in the relationship. Mm. And how do you work th this relationship? How was working with Mark Hamill? Mark Hamill is wonderful. He's a really, he's just a kind man. He's a really good actor, and um, so it was just joyous. Like we were able to rehearse together with Ryan, and we both had a lot of questions about the script that we were able to ask. Um, and it was just great. It was great. He's a really lovely man. Mm -hmm. um, what do you remember about your days with, with Kerry in the set? Um, they were awesome. I was able to have some really, like a couple really lovely scenes with her both times. Mm -hmm. um, and she was great. And we used to sing and dance between um, takes and just have a lovely, a lovely time. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel with the, with the passion of the fans? Feels great. Yeah. It's overwhelming, but I think for, um, it's like a great series of films and, you know, people are brought together in a really wonderful way. And people are really kind to each other, like Star Wars fans are really kind to each other. Um, so it's, yeah, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. The last question is, the fans, what can we wait about The, the Last Jedi? I would say you are in for uh, another great adventure, some very um, poignant moments, a lot of humour, and some answers. Yeah. <laughs> very well. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank Lacey. you. Thank you.
Uh, tell us about your character, Ray. Uh, we met her at The Force Awakens. Uh, tell us about where is she now? What is her place just now on the story? Um, we pick up right where we left off last time, uh, which is amazing for everyone because the audience, I think Ray and the audience are going through the same sort of thing. All of the questions Ray has are the questions the audience has. Um, and in The Last Jedi, there is more room for Ray to explore her own place in everything and also just understand in general what the Force is and why Luke is on an island and um, his unexpected reaction to her turning up. Uh, so I'd say she's, she's obviously right where we left her, but she's ready to ask some questions and get some answers. Tell us about the lightsaber training. Yeah, we saw a footage last night where you were very proficient with a lightsaber. Tell us about the training and the lightsaber battles. The first time around on Force Awakens, I was able to get a few months of training, which was awesome. And then for The Last Jedi, there wasn't that much time because we went straight into filming. So I was sort of fitting lightsaber training around filming, which was hard. It was great. I was much stronger. I'd been like lifting some serious weights, um, which helped a lot because it was really heavy. And I have an amazing stunt team um, that guided me a lot. So I was able to do everything pretty much in the film. But my, uh, my stunt double is, she's like freestyle champion of the world or something. She's awesome. So we have a really, really good team um, helping us along the way. Okay. And about you work on the previous movie with an excellent filmmaker like J.J. Abrams, now you work with Ryan Johnson. Uh, what do you think of his style of filmmaking? What do you think he brings to the Star Wars saga on this uh, The Last Jedi? The thing with Ryan is he was so specific from day one, as in there would be some scenes we would do with just like a tiny bit of coverage, and then there would be others that was like the most insane amounts of coverage. And what's amazing is watching the film is everything is exactly as is written, um, which is unusual. Uh, usually things change a lot more than, than that. But everything he wrote is in the film, pretty much. Um, so it's awesome, it's, it's lovely to, to, to be part of that when everything's so specific and you know, you can see exactly from page to, to scene what it is that everyone's doing and everyone's sort of place in the world. Um, it's quite comforting. Okay. Uh, Ray will be perhaps your biggest role in your career. This role in Star Wars is huge. You even have now a celebrity fan club president in George Gatt who calls Ray the Madonna of Jakku and oh, all that Star Wars God. celebration. How do you feel about being the main heroine on a Star Wars trilogy? And what do you think would this do for movie cinema in general and open roles for women everywhere? Um, I do not think I'm the main heroine in Star Wars. Um, we still have Carrie and Phasma, who's obviously antagonist. Um, but in The Last Jedi, we're introduced to Kelly Marie Tran, who plays an awesome role, and Laura Dern, who plays an awesome role. So I think what JJ and Kathy did at the beginning, casting me in uh, an important role, um, alongside John and Oscar and everyone, is they did set a uh, precedent for uh, diversity and inclusivity in the um, Star Wars universe and I think it is wonderful because there does seem to be a shifting tide in cinema to be more open to um, those who are perhaps underrepresented. La actriz dejó este mensaje para los aficionados de Star Wars en Panamá. Hello, people in Panama. Please go and see Star Wars The Last Jedi. We're sure you'll enjoy it. And can you please invite people uh, in Paraguay Paraguay. Paraguay to see Star Wars from December 14th. Hello, Paraguay. Uh, please come and see Star Wars. It comes out December 14th. We will be very happy to see you and hope you enjoy the film. I think I put a lot more pressure on myself this time because the first time around I was just like, woo, Having filming, fun. yeah. And then this time was, not that it wasn't like that, but I felt I understood much more Star Wars's impact and also Ray's impact in the story, so I felt more pressure on myself to try and do whatever it was that I did the first time around that people responded to because I didn't know what I'd done. That is a big gun. So I think as a professional, I now have a much greater understanding of how hard people work to make the things that people love. Um, 
and also to be on a set where everyone is really, really lovely. I feel really lucky that my first two film experiences were Star Wars is with just the most wonderful people. And it is overwhelming. It can be overwhelming when people are like, Whoa! but ultimately it's a good thing. Like it's a lovely film. It's a lovely universe. It brings people together and people are kind to each other when they're talking about Star Wars. Like no opinion is stupid. Like every opinion is valid. Um, and so it's wonderful to be part of that. I think Ray asks uh, questions the audience is asking. Ray wants to know where she comes from. Ray wants to know where she's going. Powerful darkness. So good to have you back. So I think there's a sense when you're making a film, when a fan is making a film for fans, ultimately things are gonna be as a lot of fans want. But I think with um, Ryan, with this film at least, it goes, because of the unexpected way it goes, everyone is gonna be like, awesome, but it will be, it will be conversational. Like it will make people ask um, more questions and hopefully surprise people. Bueno, y me encuentro con la hermosísima. La hermosísima is gorgeous, beautiful. Daisy Riley. How are you, Daisy? Good, how are you? I'm fine, I'm nervous as I say. Because you are ready, you're uh, in this great franchise. How was for you this time around? Do you get more nervous than the first time? Yes. Or is, really? Yeah. Why? The, the way I describe it is, have you ever done a skydive? Yeah. When you do a skydive, you know you have sensory overload yeah. for the first mm -hmm. 10 seconds. That to me is what the first film was. Like it was sensory overload. Everything was happening so quickly and and I got cast and then I was training them, we were filming and then it was done, like it was all so quick. And I had more time. So after that I didn't properly work for a yeah. while. And then the film came out and then we were immediately into the second one, but I had much more time to sort of process. So I was more self-conscious, which wasn't a good thing. Um, <laughs> and I was very aware of, I hadn't been aware of the impact of Star Wars before. Mm -hmm. And then I really was. Um, yeah, so I felt nervous, but it was great. It so was, it, it was more pressure this time around. I felt more pressure. I don't think it was more pressure. I just felt it. And also, you know, we hoped that people would love The Force Awakens, but the, the response was so amazing mm -hmm. um, that it's nerve-wracking thinking, I don't know what I did <laughs> the first time around, and I need to somehow capture that again. Um, but uh, Ryan was amazing, and yeah. Mark, who I got to work with a lot, was amazing too. And how was meeting Mark, Mark? Because he's the leader of this great franchise, and now you're the leader of the new era of this franchise. Is that true? Do you I, feel like that? No, I don't think that's true. I, I, I don't feel like that. What's amazing about um, Star Wars in general, it was always a family saga. Mm -hmm. Luke wouldn't have been Luke without Leia. Leia wouldn't have been Leia without Han. It, everybody, everybody matters to the other. One thing can't be without the other. And um, Ray wouldn't be without Finn, wouldn't be without BB-8, wouldn't be without Poe. So there's like a chain of relationships that wouldn't happen otherwise um, and so luckily obviously I'd already got to work with Harrison and Carrie mm. and then working with Mark was just awesome and for me it sort of felt like rounding out the yeah. the the crew because those were the three for me from everyone they were the three um, so I'm very lucky that I got to work with three. How was your approach before entering this this great franchise? Do you know all, all uh, about Star Wars even the characters the places or uh, it was training hard physically and mentally about the story? Um, I had seen the films, I knew enough. Yeah. Um, I'm not like a huge fan of anything really. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know canon and the extended universe and everything. So there's been stuff I've been learning, like literally on the set three weeks ago. Someone was like, yeah, 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 and this happened and this happened and this happened. And I was like, wait, what? I don't think this is a time travel story. <laughs> yeah. But then I thought, oh my God, maybe it is. Maybe it's something I missed. Um, so there was a very much a sense of learning as I went, which I really liked because mm -hmm. Ray is learning as she goes and it felt like a nice parallel between my life and hers in the story. Um, yeah, but I was not prepared. <laughs> this new trilogy have a lot of woman empowerment. How, how do you feel with that? How do you feel that little girls or girls are gonna look up to you or, you or your character when they go to the movie screen? Is that part of what you want to people get away from the movie? Um, Mm, that wasn't what I wanted from the film. That wasn't what I, like I'm a... What do you want from the film? I'm like a 25 year old girl that grew up in a liberal household in London. Mm -hmm. Like to me, um, it has always been equal. And I guess, because I'm not a big 
film person. <laughs> There's loads of films I haven't seen. So I never really understood the disparity on screen because I read books yeah. and books are far more evenly weighted <laughs> to men and women. So it, was, it wasn't like I wasn't aware that we were missing some representation, but I became, like filming this, I was like, awesome, I'm doing a film. And that was what I was doing, like I was yeah. doing my job. And then it became another thing um, when the film came out and then I understood more what people had been yearning for. So obviously there's a sense of that. And I want to do people proud um, because of what, you know, like parents talking about taking their kids to something, yeah. being proud of mm -hmm. what their child is seeing on screen. So that's um, important. But ultimately, I'm just part of an awesome story. Yeah, an awesome story, an awesome, it's also an awesome saga from history, from movies, history, mm -hmm. cinema. And now you're part of this history. Mm -hmm. And how, how do you feel? Like, you're over, always going to be Ray from Star Wars. Do you, do you think about that? Do you care? Do you read what people say? Um, I'm not always going to be writing for Star because I'm Daisy. <laughs> and I think, again, it's nice because I, I'm i not her. Like, I yeah. play her, and obviously a lot of me is in her, but I'm my own person. And um, and career-wise, if I'm always known as Daisy who played Ray. Yeah. Well, how do you, how, how do you, how do you separate that from fans? Because fans, they're going to look to you, like with Mark. Mark is going to be always Luke Skywalker. I think, you're but be Mark great. came from a different time. Like, it was just different then. I think now there is enough mythology, mm -hmm. in nothing like Star Wars, but there are enough films where people, it's like deeply ingrained in the public uh, knowledge, in the public um, psyche. Mm -hmm. um, and then you see people, everything is much more... Um, accessible so people see you as you and not just the character whereas yeah. that would have happened less mm -hmm. um, but also I feel really lucky that I have a brilliant agent and I have wonderful scripts that I was able to read it so I'm already doing different things mm -hmm. um, so I love you more than the train huh? <laughs> I love the movie thank you um, so I already feel you know not pigeonholed I feel very lucky of everything I've been able to do already I know there's a lot of secrecy about Star Wars are we gonna see or find out this time where your parents are, where you're coming from, or is that, we're gonna have to wait for that? There are, there are answers. There is, this film for me, for Ray, is a big exploration as to how she got here, what the force is, and there's still obviously a yearning, like she's, she wants to know where she belongs. Mm -hmm. And she's found that slightly with the resistance, but then obviously immediately had to leave. Um, so she's just trying to find a family uh, so she's looking backwards. I think this story looks a lot forward, but we do get some answers yet. Yeah. We hope to see you singing again soon. Thank I love you. that song with Barbara. Thank you. You've got a great voice. <laughs> Thank you very much. Gracias. Gracias. Un placer. <laughs> Thank you. ¿Cómo te sientes de ser parte de este nuevo episodio de Star Wars? Me siento muy emocionada. Estoy muy feliz de poder continuar este viaje que inició en el despertar de la fuerza. ¿Cómo podrías describir tu papel? Your character. Donde quedamos en el despertar de la fuerza es donde exactamente inicia Los Últimos Jedi. Lo bueno de eso es que ella tiene tiempo en esa isla para charlar con Luke Skywalker, responder muchas preguntas acerca de muchas cosas, algunas inesperadas, y esto la lleva a un estado mucho más emocional sobre qué es lo que pasa con ella y con la galaxia. Este es un ejemplo de cómo una mujer se vuelve una héroe o una superhéroe. Algo que me gusta es que ustedes van a tener toda la historia. Vamos a entender el por qué ella es así y vamos a ver las preguntas que ella responde. Es más como, oh Dios, siento estas cosas, pero no entiende y necesita a alguien que la ayude porque necesita saber qué está pasando. Pero pienso que está luchando con lo que está pasando más que lo que un superhéroe hace. Hola Colombia, muchas gracias por vernos y espero que puedan ver El Último Jedi. Solo en cine. And it's weird when you leave something and you have a year and then you see it. Like this time watching this, it's been a year and a half. So it's a long time that you sort of let something go and then you're seeing it. Um, it's just odd. Also watching yourself back and you think, oh, I, I didn't think I was doing that there. I thought I was doing something that I don't think is coming across. So it made me more 
aware of that, which I don't think is a good thing because you shouldn't be thinking about. I feel like Ray is more uh, like being thrown into things. Obviously Luke was too, but she's, I don't know, questioning everything. And in this film in particular, it's interesting because you should feel like they're both on the light side. They're both trying to do the right thing. But how Luke greets her is not what Ray expects. And Ray has all of her own questions while also Luke has all of his own questions about himself and her and herself and him. Um, so it's an interesting meeting. Um, but it's wonderful to see the relationship grow. I need someone to show me my place in all this. I think people should see The Last Jedi in theatres because it is a good film. Um, I think it, there are enough new characters so that even if you're not totally ingrained in the Star Wars world, there's enough offerings to, um, it, it, it isn't, it's great for fans, for previous fans, but also if you're coming into it, it isn't exclusive. It's very inclusive to everyone. And there's enough of the new in this one and the old for new people coming in and people who have been fans from before coming in. And I think it's, um, it's wonderful. I mean, everybody every day struggles with good and evil. And to see that story play out on a cinema screen is fun. Hola a todo el mundo, ¿cómo están? Espero que muy bien. Oigan, estoy muy contento, un poco nervioso, porque estoy nada más y nada menos que con la gran y bella actriz de Star Wars, The Last Jedi, Daisy Ridley. How are you? Good. Bien. Wait, what is it? Bien, eh? Bien. Bien. Muy bien. ¿Y tú? Bien, gracias. I saw 15 minutes of the film. It's amazing. How do you feel coming back to the saga? Uh, it was very weird coming back. Um, it was the film had just come out and uh, people had responded very positively. Um, it, it was like it took me by surprise, uh, everything. And so then we had to go straight into the next one. So it was very weird. And I sort of had expectations of where I thought the story was going to go and what Ray was going to do. Um, so there was a lot of questions I had for Ryan. Yeah. Um, but Mark and I were able to have like a couple weeks of Ryan just rehearsing. So we both had a lot of questions and we got our answers and it was, uh, yeah, it was good. There's a lot of questions, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, for me, there's a lot of questions that I know you can't answer. <laughs> um, this changed your life completely, right? How was uh, this for you? Because it didn't change my life completely. Like a lot of stuff has changed, but um, I, I had a very solid life before. Okay. So I still have a solid life now. I just am able to be working as an actress, which is awesome. And I get to fly to countries I've never been to, to talk about the film, which is awesome too. Um, so it's, more, it's mostly the travel and working that's changed. Yeah, right. Otherwise it's pretty much the same. Yeah. I know you have a lot of training. Can yes. you talk about that? So I had sort of trained in the interim, just body training. Um, to, to keep up physical strength, because I knew exactly with my hair net on yeah. and that, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of pictures of your training on the internet. I had a, a trainer who got me very strong. It's like the strongest I've ever been. And it was amazing, because when we got to do some physical work in The Last Jedi, I uh, felt much more able to, because I'd never really trained before the first one. So it was like, my body was like, whoa. So this one, I felt much more ready for all the physical stuff. And when you use a lightsaber, that's that's difficult. Yeah, it's heavy. Yeah, really? which is why I did a lot of weight stuff because it's like I don't know how much it weighs, like three kilos or something, and it's like it's unevenly weighted. So uh, it's hard. Yeah, I mean, battling the dark side is difficult enough. Yeah, With a lightsaber, it's even more so. What was the biggest challenge for you in this new film? The biggest challenge for me was. People were very, very kind the first time around, but I didn't really understand what people had found in Ray. In the character, yes, but in performance-wise, I didn't totally get it, because it's you're not objective or subjective to your own thing. So I worried that I wouldn't be able to capture that thing again, whatever it was that people responded to. Um, so it was probably that. But like honestly, I think so much is down to Ryan for just making me feel okay and uh, sort of in control of it again. Because it's sort of that weird thing of you do a thing and then millions of people see it and it suddenly becomes everyone else's thing and you sort of need to find how it's your thing again. I found out this on the internet. This picture went oh, yeah. viral everywhere. Yeah. And people react to this 
Oh Maybe. my gosh. <laughs> oh my, <laughs> that is so weird. I know, I know. This is... The oh, that's a good one, yeah, 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 yeah. And my favorite. Nice. You know? Nice. But this is amazing. You really carried my, my camera? Yeah. I'm this strong. Heavy. You're strong, I know. He's not so heavy. Oh, really? Yeah, like he's in good shape. Oh, and really? I'm really strong. Oh, really? I found this. The Blu-ray. Oh yeah, <laughs> nice. I want you to react to this. Uh, I want to show you how the Star Wars characters would look like with beard. So, the first one, John Boyega. Wow. He looks amazing, right? That's serious, yeah. He looks wise. Yes, that's really right. Really wise. Now, Kylo. Oh, <laughs> there's just a lot of hair everywhere. Um, yeah. I, I'd say it should be darker. But yeah, it works in its way. This is my favorite. That's cute. Yeah. That's a good Christmas card. Yeah, I would look like this if I had beard, you know, because I'm baby face, maybe I will look But like you're not a robot. Yeah, that's the thing. Oh, and the last one, my favorite. Wow. <laughs> Someone at school said that I look like Orlando Bloom in Lord of the Rings. And then I said that to John and John agreed. <laughs> I have little elf ears and I sort of feel like that's quite a Lord of the Rings-esque yeah, Lord feel. Lord of the Rings. Yeah, or the Hobbit. <laughs> Daisy, thank you very much. You're amazing. Congratulations about the film. Yes, Miss Daisy really. thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm very happy to meet you. Thank you. So now you are with the Force. You have more experience in this Star Wars uh, mm -hmm. universe, mm -hmm. but how was it different to the first movie, The Force Awakens, and this one? I think it's sort of like Ray getting into The Force Awakens. I had no idea mm -hmm. what I was getting into because I thought I was signing up to a film, and sure. then and I knew Star Wars was a big deal, but I didn't realize how massive it was. So I was like, ah, rolling <laughs> through it. And uh, second time around, I knew what I was getting back into. I knew what people had liked about the first one. And so I felt a greater sense of knowing what was going on and having an understanding of it as Ray does in the film. There's a sense of, even though she's still searching, mm -hmm. she knows more now what it is what? she's searching for. Sure, now she, she's not like all lost and everything. Exactly. Now she has like a path to Exactly, follow. she has a direction. I'm gonna make you some quick questions. Okay. So you just answer as fast as you can. Okay. Okay, ready? Yeah. BB-8 or R2-D2? BB-8. The main team of Star Wars or Imperial March? Oh, <laughs> main team. Okay, your favorite quote? Uh, do or do, wait, what is it? Do or do not, there is no try. I can't <laughs> remember the quote. I think it's, it's okay, do it's or okay. do not. And finally, uh, the Dark Force or Jar Jar Binks? Oh, <laughs> oh. Oh, I say the dark book. Something for me that's very special is having uh, female characters. And I remember that in the last film, there was all this issue with the Mary Sue thing. And oh, yeah. Yes, and I was like, come on, like, we have seen guys doing everything, being super powerful, and now we have a, mm. uh, a girl. I don't buy the Mary Sue thing anyway. I found the I find, I find the term sexist in itself okay. because okay. it's Mary Sue. Okay. I don't think there's a thing called Ryan Craig. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I was doing it, it, I never felt sure of, like, playing her, I never felt sure of what was going on. Okay. It wasn't like, this is happening and I'm so powerful and look at me go. And essentially, all I found Ray trying to do in the first one was she was trying to do the right thing. Like, she was trying to help BB-8 and then she was trying to help Finn. And now she's trying to help the Resistance. It's not a sort of self-centered power that she's just exhibiting because also she didn't ask for anything in the first one yeah. like she wasn't asking to go on this adventure it was just an awesome adventure yeah actually she, she kind of runs away right exactly when she's, there, she's like i don't want this exactly so i think now she has time with luke how was it uh to work with mark hamill because probably you work uh before but now that we see that the real interaction it was amazing because the first time around obviously it was just one moment yes which was still amazing um very epic yeah, so it was very exciting. Mark is amazing. He's amazing. He's an amazing actor and he's a wonderful man. And I feel really lucky too, because I'm, I think all of us do sort of, but I've got to act pretty much with everyone. Like yes. I've got to work with everyone. So I feel very lucky that I've got to do that. And Mark was another. What would you say is like the best advice you get from some of the actors? I think what Mark Harrison and Carrie did do is um, embrace it because it's very overwhelming. I didn't know what this was, um, and I think there's just a sense that 
they embrace it and it doesn't have to be scary. It can just be wonderful because it's a wonderful thing that brings a lot of people together. So, uh, yeah. I think that's a great advice for like everything yeah. in life. Yeah, I'm exactly. gonna take that advice. How long should I do it in? Be friends with Ray, Finn or Poe. Thin. Speak like Yoda or breathe like uh, Vader. Speak like Yoda. Weirdest question a fan has made you? Oh. oh, I don't know. If I was like Snoke reincarnated. What social media would Luke use? It would be something obscure. Maybe Twitter and he would tweet like every year. Favorite Star Wars sound effect? <laughs> Number one reason to go see The Last Jedi. Mark Hamill's in it. Your best pork face impression? <laughs> What social media would Ray use? She wouldn't. Fight Kylo Ren or Darth Vader? Darth Vader, because Kylo Ren's really scary. Luke's favorite Disney movie? Lion King. Ray's favorite Disney movie? Mulan. Best way to end an interview? Saying I don't know in Spanish, no sé. Well, Daisy, nice to meet you, and thank you for your time. Of course. So how do you feel now um, being once again a Ray? Um, it was very nerve-wracking. I felt much more nervous the second time around. I felt like, I just felt more self-conscious, which is not helpful when you're trying to be an actor. Um, but it got so, like once I'd sort of gotten rid of the nerves, it was just wonderful. Like to be able to work with Mark a lot was amazing. To be able to work with Ryan was amazing. It was, uh, I know a lot of the crew we'd worked with before. It was just joyous. It was so joyous. And how do you prepare to, to play the role of Ray again? Um, I don't know. We didn't have that much time. The Force Awakens had just come out. And then we literally had like two weeks or three weeks and then we started filming. Um, so we had time to rehearse, which was great. Because Mark and I, I think for like two weeks, I would talk to Ryan and then we would talk to Ryan. Um, and there were a lot of conversations going on about the choices Ryan had made and how that was affecting us and our characters and everything. Um, so it's probably just talking through everything and we were able to rehearse the scenes, which was great. And do you have something in common, in common with Ray? I try and make good choices. <laughs> um, I think Ray has a lot more responsibility on her shoulders than I do. I'm an actress and she is trying to help save the galaxy. Um, so in those terms, no, but obviously a lot of me is in her. I don't know. I think maybe you'd have to ask someone else. I'm not sure. And do you have uh, memories of Star Wars from your childhood? Not really. I remember going to one, I think, when I was a child, and I remember being really scared. It was in the cinema, and I remember the fire. Um, but not really. I was, like, I was like a bookworm. I'm like a book person. I was never a huge film person. Um, so even now, people are just outraged at the films I haven't seen. So uh, I'm trying to rectify that, but I was always more of a book person. So I can remember much more things I've read than things I've seen. And what did you think about the movie script uh, when you first got it? The movie script yes. of The Last Jedi? Yes. I was very surprised. Yeah, I think everyone keeps saying that this film is unexpected, um, which I would agree with. I was, um, I laughed and I didn't cry, but I was very moved. And I think it embodies a lot of things and shows a lots of different facets of the characters we've met in The Force Awakens. I think it's uh, beautiful. Do you think the fans will like it? I do, yes. And I, I read that Carrie Fisher helped you in, in, in the last movie, is that that's right? The, the reporting of that wasn't quite right, no. I think everyone helped us, everyone has helped us the whole way through. I think JJ was so supportive from the beginning and then Ryan obviously sort of took over in being the support on set. And we were just surrounded by people. Um, everyone helps, everyone helps. But yes, it's wonderful seeing Carrie and Mark, um, how they are with people who love it and how they are on set and what they bring um, is just wonder and joy and they're just lovely people. So, uh, so yeah. And I can imagine that your life changed since the last uh, Star Wars Force Awakens. Is that true? Are, are you happy with your new life? It's changed in that I travel much more mm -hmm. and I'm working much more. Um, but it's weird because so much hasn't. Like, I still feel the same. I've, obviously, things have changed in the past few years because people grow up. 
everything is still the same as it was, but obviously a lot of things are different, but mainly it's professionally is different, um, which I'm very grateful for because I'm very happy to be working. And are we going to see you in the new Carmen trilogy? Oh, well, I'm going to probably be in the third one of this trilogy. <laughs> and, and then I think that will be me. I think what's Ryan's, they, they announced this week that Ryan, I don't actually know anything about it, Ryan's doing a set of three, but with new characters. Uh -huh. So I think then I can be like, there you go, have fun. <laughs> and how was working with Ryan Johnson? It was great. He's like the most chill guy. He'd just be there like doing his crossword, occasionally smoking a cigar, just like just the most chill. He knows exactly what he wants. So it's not that it's easy, like obviously everyone's working incredibly hard, but it's simple in that there's like confines of what you're doing and there's like a safe environment which you're, you're doing so you can try different things, but ultimately you're always going that way. Um, so it was great, pretty good. And what was the hardest part of, of, of making this movie? Oh, probably not working with John as much. Because that was one of the things when I read the script, I was like, ah, I'm not with John as much as I was the first time around. And John's like my bud. And he was like such a big support the first time around. Um, so we obviously saw each other a lot and we worked together. Um, but yeah, you know, different things. But then it became great because you get to work with different people. But that was the initial thing of like, uh. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much you. for your time. It was a pleasure. Thank and you. can you please invite people uh, in Paraguay? Paraguay. Paraguay to see Star Wars. Hello, Paraguay. Uh, please come and see Star Wars. It comes out December 14th. We will be very happy to see you and hope you enjoy the film. She's trying to find her place. She is trying to find her home and her family. And those questions go with the light side and the dark side. The questions she's asking aren't specifically geared towards the light side. It's questions in general. Why do people become the way they do? Where does this thing come from, the force, whatever it is that she has? Um, so those are questions that are asked in general. Um, so there may be questions that apply to the light side or the dark side that she's learning. Um, but ultimately, I feel like she's gonna do the right thing. Something inside me is awake. I need help. Adam said something really interesting the first, when we were doing interviews for The Force Awakens. He said, there isn't, it's not the difference between good and bad, it's people think they're right. Kylo Ren thinks he's doing anything particularly wrong. Ultimately, people on both sides die. People on both sides sacrifice themselves for the struggle. And usually it's one person that's sort of leading them down any one route. And there's comfort in that because it's easy to follow someone when they think they're right. That's why so many people follow awful people because they're so, their convictions are so strong. Israel. It's easier, like it's so much easier. And in this film, as we've seen in the trailer, Luke says, you know, it's time for the Jedi Order to end. The conviction seems to have gone, at least in that moment from Luke. It's just easier to go dark side. Kill it. If you have to. That's the only way to become what you were meant to be. I wouldn't say either one was more fun. I had an incredible time on both. Um, the first one will always be my first film, but both of them offered solace. Like the first time around, I couldn't tell anyone what, was I, what I was doing. So people at work became my family. And the second time around, I'd worked with a lot of- You didn't tell anybody anything? No, for a few months, nobody knew, yeah. Yeah, yeah, my family knew, and then everyone else found out three months later. It was a terrible time. And, and also, I was getting really strong, so everyone was like, wow, you look ripped. And I was like, yeah. Um, but both times, like, everyone at the studio at Pinewood offered, like, a sense of comfort and yeah. family. And it's just easy. Like, it's easy to go to work. Everyone knew what we were doing. It's not, like, hidden in secrets. And so it's just an, a wonderful environment. I need someone. Show me my place in all this. It's like watching yourself on a big screen like that for the first time is really overwhelming. And then it had been a while since we filmed, so I couldn't entirely remember everything we did. So I was just like, Ugh. and I just, I really thought I did an awful job. Uh, and then it got a bit easier because I had to watch it a number of times because we were doing all of the press stuff for it. But there were still moments I was like, Oy! like when the lightsaber flies, yeah. I was like, awesome. Uh, and it was nice seeing it with people 
um, like in a cinema, in a room full of people who really love it. And also like my family there, knowing that my family like, oh, this is what you've been doing for six months. That's the reason you're going to stop it. Yeah, exactly. I've seen this roster only once before. It didn't scare me enough then. It does now. Oh, Yoda. Uh, I love, even though the, the prequels are the questionable ones with fans, his fighting in that is hilariously awesome. And uh, he just imparts so much wisdom. And we're all seeking wisdom all the time. So, uh, him. I think we can expect um, a continuation a wonderful continuation of The Force Awakens with unexpected turns and um, lots of humor, um, but also an exploration into some like dark. She's trying to find her home, like her heart, her mm -hmm. soul's home. Um, and she's doing all of these things to try and help other people. So I think there's a deep sense of integrity in what she's doing. Daisy, how are you? Good, how are you? End of episode seven on the island, and now because all the trailers, you know, we are, we, we are crazy about it. What is happening here? Ray is on the island with Luke. Mm -hmm. That is where she is for a portion of the film. And she is asking Luke all of the questions the audience is asking. Mm -hmm. What is my, where do I come from? What am I doing? What is this thing? What is the force, basically? And so that's awesome that she goes and to, gets to go on this journey with Luke of discovery. Um, and then there are perhaps questions from other people. And what I think is amazing is ultimately it is going to make her more, her convictions more strong. Because if you get all of your information from one person, it's bound to be skewed, even though Luke is very honest as we saw in the trailer. I think it's good to get two totally opposing points of view, potentially. It makes whatever you do richer, I think. Yeah, well, the trailer is a little of that, so yeah. now we will see the whole movie and find out what's yeah. happening. Something inside me has always been there. But now it's awake. Also, you know, something I really love about this new generation of Star Wars is they're going back to practical. They're going back to mm. real sets, mm. animatronics, amazing locations. For you as an actress, I suppose it's more, you know, rich to play. I know, I was really jealous I went to Bolivia. Really jealous. <laughs> it sounded amazing. Yeah. Yes. It's weird because I just did something that's very visual effects heavy. Mm. And, uh... And people, it's weird, because even though we talked about the practical effects too, people still assume that everything we did was visual effects. Mm. And I'm like, I've never seen so much green screen, as in the film I just did, because a lot of it is, is green screeny stuff. Because um, it has to be. Mm. There's no other way for it not to be. But it's weird, because the assumption is that that's what I'm used to, and it just isn't. Mm. Like with Star Wars, it wasn't. With or Murder on the Orient Express, it wasn't. We were on a real train. Um, and it's awesome, it adds to everything, because all the creatures are puppeteered, yeah. um, and we are where we're supposed to be. Uh, it's, yeah, it's great. And I need help. Before episode seven, how was your relationship with the Star Wars? You know, you're like a fan, and you don't care, or you just... I was like, not that I didn't care, like I'd seen them, yeah. but I wasn't like, Crazy. Star Wars, yeah. yeah. And now I'm still not Star Wars, but obviously now I'm like in the fabric of Star Wars. Mm -hmm. um, and what's really nice too is like, I didn't go in with any expectations on myself. Like I wasn't trying to be Leia or Luke or Han. I was just trying to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. And now I'm more aware of everything. It does make me more, feel more responsibility, I think, because now I understand how much people love it. Um, but ultimately it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful, was to universe to be part of it brings people together in a really beautiful way. I've seen this raw strength only once before. It didn't scare me enough then. It does now. I really can understand it. You know, for you as an actress, create a character, be involved mm. in a big franchise, mm. work with amazing actors. But for me, it must be really crazy when they show you your action figure. That, yeah. that, that, that sensation, how was it? The thing is, I think the only, the first time I saw them, John and I went to this Disney store opening, <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. It was really peculiar. Mm -hmm. And it still is weird, especially when they're sort of like, 
<laughs> don't really look like me, which only happens occasionally. Um, and I think occasionally people are like, eh, look what I did. Um, but it's really cool. It's odd, but it's cool. When you're growing up, remember, for example, for, for a lot of people, it's a Star Wars that, you know, breaking point. When you remember when you're growing up, what kind of art or movies or music inspire you that you can say, okay, this touched me to now I am an actress? You know, I think it was when I, because I went to boarding school, so mm -hmm. we, obviously for like 30 girls, we could watch one film. Okay. And I remember we watched Rent so many times. Okay. And I remember being like, have you ever seen it? Rent? Yeah. The musical? Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember being traumatized. Yeah. <laughs> and then my friend was in it last year, uh -huh. and I was traumatized. <laughs> but I remember thinking, like, wow. That's the one thing. I've never actually really remembered that, but it, it's the one thing that I remember thinking, this has made me feel really deeply. Uh -huh. um, and how amazing that a film can do that. Yes, it's amazing, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, that, it, it's, it's a piece of art, so mm. that can yeah. touch our souls. So, can we expect maybe a musical in your career? I'd you? love to do a musical. Yeah? I'm still waiting for someone to ask me. <laughs> like, please do. <laughs> Why not? Um, I mean, there are a lot more superior singers than me in the world, but I'm hoping that my, my, my want will be enough. Yes, I, I hope One so. Day. Well, thank you so much for thank your time. You. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you, you too. It's fun. But the last job I just did, there was huge Star Wars fan and I didn't realize and he really kept it together for like six weeks and then there was a day I think the day after the trailer came out he came up to me he was like is it time I was like you ask me anything so I'm not kidding for 20 minutes he pitched me this thing which sounded insane like Snoke wasn't real and then Ray had died Ray was Snoke but they had come back from the dead it was crazy but I was like, do you know what? If you believe that, that's awesome. But usually I don't read things, but usually people tell me things. And it's great because everyone has an opinion. I, I just uh, talked with, uh, with Mark and we're talking about uh, Carrie Fisher. This is, uh, this is maybe going to be the, the last movie that we are going to watch her. And, and she was the heart of mm. all the saga. How was the experience uh, for you uh, working with her in two movies? It was amazing. And I was very lucky both times that I got to have very meaningful moments with her. Um, that, uh, that are beautiful, I think, in this film. I just saw it and the moments between me and her. I feel very, very lucky that I got to share them. But yeah, it's hard to know. Like I think I was saying yesterday, I don't, it's hard to know what can ha happen now because she is like the pulse of the whole thing. Um, so yeah, it's very, it's, it's, um, it's hard to imagine. The whole thing is hard to imagine. Yeah, because uh, she was like the role model for yeah. the girls that kick ass in. But also, she was just loved by everyone, like yeah. absolutely everyone. Um, within the story, she represented something. I, I don't know. So it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's hard to imagine anything else.